Now, dear friends, shall we turn again to that scripture which we read responsively? You know, it's a wonderful thing that we can turn to things that abide when we live in such an ephemeral world, a passing world of unreliable values. Psalm 62, please. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. And in the fifth verse, my soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Here is a, a psalm of King David. My expectation is from you, from him. And what is our expectation? Now, you know, some of these great men of God, they prayed and expected great things from God. They didn't say life is going to get harder and I'm going to be rocked and battered and bruised and, and finally sink in despair. No. When we look, when we anchor our trust in the Word of God, we have a different way of looking at life. Through Christ, in Christ, what is he is the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. What is the import of resurrection? When a person is dead, when a thing is dead, there's neither hope, nor life, nor breath, and the matter is closed. It's dead. And here comes Jesus and says, Now that's why I came to be your resurrection and life, to lift you out of this gloom out of your doldrums and out of your fearful fantasies. That's why I've come. I am the resurrection and the life. I will get you to live. You won't just exist. You see, most of our lives appear to be just focused on reaction to events. But what we see in the scripture is a preparation to meet eventualities of any sort which are round the corner. That's the difference. See if I'm going to react, only react, in a boxing bout. You know, if I get an undercut, I, I just react. I'm going to get nowhere in that bout. I'm going to be knocked around like a rubber doll. You know? But if I am on the offensive, then it's different. When I know what are the punches to choose, 
and what are the punches that are coming and I am all ready to counter them, then it's different. That is the what God does for you. He prepares you for any eventuality that is around the corner. You can't quite see it yet, but when it does come, you're all ready for it. Well, take this on. No big deal. God has forewarned me. God has prepared me. You see, folks, it's a quite a different way of living. It's easy on your nerves. See, you know, people talk about nerves. Who is wrecking your nerves? You are wrecking your nerves. You know, there was a French man in one of my meetings in Paris last week. And this French man was brought to me after the meeting. A very young fellow, 25. He said, there are some African folks, strangers, maybe weird people, I don't know. And they are on top of my flat. And I'm afraid they're casting some spells on me. So I can't sleep properly, I'm worried. You know, I knew nothing about this, but I was mentioning certain things in my address that evening, which zeroed in on that kind of problems. And this fellow was quite surprised. But then, what did he tell, say next day? Last night I slept well. Why? Why should our sleep be broken into by all kinds of stresses and fantasies and imagined presence of evil phantoms. Now, these are all, you know, we have a new crop today. The Potter Demons. The Potter Demons are really getting hold of people. You know, people thought, it was just an entertaining little magical stories. No longer so. There is a wave of people coming who are porter-driven. Stressed out, fearful phantom conscious people. They're not going to be healthy. They're suddenly going to imagine somebody is running after them with their dagger. And they may imagine you're the person that is running after them with a dagger and go after you. Well, we have got a world today of real and imagined demons, a demon-conscious world. You see, somebody told me that I should break up all the china in my house. Break up all the china? You know, China was, some people treasured some of those old, beautiful uh, porcelain. 
And once destroyed, it's very hard to recover them. Someone told me to do it and I did it. What do you mean? Somebody told you to stick a da dagger in the, in the neck of your daughter and you did it. Now, this is the kind of world to which we are getting so accustomed. And we think, you can't help it, you know. We have to face it, you know. We've got to take it in our stride. No, you don't have to take it in your stride, as you imagine. Nor can you. What does the Bible say? Jesus was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. So what do I say? Lord, I am going to this tough place where people are butchering each other, killing each other. And I am going to speak, address these factions which are out to murder one another. And I want these demons to run out of this place. We don't want this to go on and young people being killed. Now that's the promise of God. He was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. It is not a wild expectation. It is an expectation which is anchored on the word of God. See, folks, how do you do your groceries? How do you do your groceries? All right, you forgot your, let us take it that, your credit cards do not work anymore. However, how do you do your groceries? By the denomination of the bank bill which you present. And you have so much trust. How many of you can remember the old writing on the dollar bill? Today it only says this is legal tender, but you know what it originally said? There is in the Bank of America, the Treasury of America, silver to back this piece of paper. You know, that's what it said. But how do you go and do your groceries? Do you take a $5 bill to buy $50 groceries? No. You make sure here's $50 on this bill and I'm going to get my groceries. How do you pray? The same way. Lord, this is what your word says. And I'm presenting what you have said, what you have said, back to you. And I don't want to be shortchanged. Why not? There is no silver today to back up all our paper currency. The gold standard has gone. But the word of God will never go. You can present it to God and say, here's what you said, and this is my expectation. I am anchored in this, and I will not be short-changed. You can change my nature. You can give me a new heart. You can put a new spirit within me, as you said, and you can make me more than conqueror.
That's what you said. And here are all the negative factors with which I am hardly able to sleep. But this is what you have said and promised. I hold you to your promise. Now, my dear friends, that's the way to go. My expectation is from you. And you will never fail. What a wonderful Savior. You know, I was not referring to an imagined situation. In that very place where which those areas were called the headhunters. People there were called headhunters historically. They came home with heads of their enemies, tuck on their spikes. And there we have built just now um, a place five times as big as this, where people can hear the word of God. Four or five times as big as this. And be transformed. Lord, my expectation is from him. Last of all, eighth verse, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I was see, I was just out of my car and one of our centers surrounded by acreage I just climbed out of my seat next to the driver. There came a panting man rushing with blood on him. And the fellow seeing the open door almost collapsed into my seat. I didn't know what it was all about. There was a crowd of people after him to get him with all kinds of weapons. I said to this man, you know, he could barely talk, he was panting. He found that a little open door of my car was his refuge. We helped him to get away from that crowd that were chasing him to kill him. However, what is our real refuge? Our refuge is Jesus, the impregnable rock, the unshakable Jesus. Trust in him at all times, you people. Let us pray. Let us tell God, God, you will never shortchange those who come to you with your word and promise. Wherever my expectations have been invested, I withdraw them now and I wish to invest my expectation in Jesus, in you. 
you are my refuge. You are my refuge. Whatever my need, my sins, my failure, I need you for ballast or I shake with every wind. Wash me in your blood. Here I am. Take me. Take me. I put my trust in you. Pray in your hearts. Precious Lord Jesus, in times like these, when people appear to be drowning around us, and industry is sinking and jobs are shrinking. Lord our God, it's not just the financial aspect that drives us to you. We have a soul to save. We have a life to invest. We have a purpose for which to live. We have a neighbor to love and lift. We come to you. We want this total transformation to be wrought in us. Hear our prayer. In Jesus' holy name, amen.